Hi guys! For today's very cute video, we're making a cake popcorn bouquet filled with four types of fun and unique DIY treats. There's bare Oreo pops, Cupid's marshmallow kebabs, as well as donuts on a stick, and cake pops that look like cupcakes and conversation hearts. The conversation heart candies sparked my inspiration to create a pastel Valentine's theme, and these cones make such a sweet presentation. So let's create something magical! First for these adorable teddy bear Oreo Pops, you're going to need two types of Oreos, the minis and regular size, as well as your melted chocolate. I colored mine similar to a caramel shade and 8 inch lollipop sticks. Start by twisting open a cookie and set the top half off to the side. After that, grab a mini Oreo and scrape off the cream, pressing that onto the center. And once those layers are in place, it's time to attach Mr. Bear ears by dipping the mini Oreos about halfway into the melted chocolate, holding down for a few seconds exactly where the ears are placed. The most important part of the whole structure is securing the stick with chocolate using just enough pressure without breaking the cookie. Then I also add a small spoonful directly onto the stick as a glue to sandwich everything together. Now we're all ready to get dipping, I quickly plunge inside of a silicone dipping cup until completely covered and tap off the excess chocolate just as you would a cake pop. Give it a tap upside down and the back as well to prevent bumps and place Mr. Bear upright to dry in a cake pop stand. To achieve the cute caramel color, I mixed a combination of Merkin's white wafers with milk chocolate wafers and warmed it up with Chef Master candy coloring in yellow and orange. And for my other tips and tricks, it's all about preference whether you prefer dipping multiple coats or not. No worries if you see some of the Oreo peeking through the chocolate. It gives the effect of the wooly looking textured fur. However, I always recommend to thin out the chocolate with coconut oil for a fluid dipping consistency. I find two coats is just right for his fur and pop any air bubbles with a toothpick. It's super easy to decorate and bring them to life. Stick on any details with icing or chocolate. For the muzzle, I cut out a small circle of fondant with a plunger cutter and press the toothpick down the middle as an indentation and a mini heart sprinkle for the nose. Guys, the sprinkle grabber is a lifesaver. You could find it linked down below in my Amazon store. Finish off his eyes with two dots of black melted chocolate and Mr. Bear is the life of the party. The next treat is so easy yet unique. I found strawberry flavored heart marshmallows at Target and decided I just had to make these. Marshmallow pops are one of the most popular treats for my baby shower video. If you've seen that tutorial, I mentioned that it's best to have a coarse standing sugar. The favorite day brand from Target was an amazing quality shown here in the hot pink. However, I didn't have the coarse sugar for the blue and purple, so it's perfectly fine if you you don't have it on hand. All I'm doing is sticking a toothpick into the center of the marshmallow and giving it a quick dip into some water. Just be sure to tap off the excess before coating with a generous amount of sanding sugar in the color that you want to use. The reason the coarse sugar works best is that it's less likely to get wet and also has a sweet crunch to it, but you'll see the regular works too. Go ahead and tap a bit more of the water onto the parchment paper to prevent the sugar from getting saturated. Don't forget to coat the bottom too, that's the part that can be easily missed. And covering going all around, I love how easy and effortless these are. Just keep in mind that the marshmallows are still soft and can be easily squished when handling, so give yourself the night before to prepare them. This allows the marshmallows to firm up overnight before sliding onto the skewers. Since these marshmallows are on the smaller side, I prefer thin wooden bamboo skewers instead of lollipop sticks. I will link them along with all the supplies shown down below. When the marshmallows are nice and firm, finish it off by removing them from the toothpicks and thread one by one in the color pattern that you want for the cutest Cupid's Arrow Marshmallow Pops. 
Instead of donut cake pops, a fun way to switch it up is to have actual mini donuts in our bouquet with a simple and delicious baked vanilla donut recipe. I'm going to sift all the dry ingredients into my mixing bowl to give the donuts a light texture. First is two cups of flour that looks a lot like a snowstorm along with three quarters a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, and one teaspoon of salt. That'll be the last of the sifting. It's all worth it. Last, add in two tablespoons of melted butter, two beaten eggs, and three quarters a cup of buttermilk. This ingredient makes such a difference in the texture and tangy flavor of the donuts. Give it a quick mix, mix, mix until combined without overbeating the batter. And spray a silicone mini donut pan with non-stick. This pan is my favorite go-to for the perfect size mini donuts, especially in the bouquet. I'm filling each cavity about a third of the way with batter to ensure the donuts don't blow up in the oven and pop them into bake for 8 minutes at 350 degrees or until a toothpick comes out clean. After the donuts have completely cooled down, the fun part is the decorating. Of course, I have this sprinkled in a pastel jimmy mix from Sweet Tooth Fairy. And instead of icing with a glaze, I chose to dip into pastel shades of chocolate. The technique works really well since chocolate lasts longer without drying out. And the colors don't fade as quickly, which is especially helpful if you're planning to sell these. Twist your donut into a shallow dipping container and lift it up while shimmying the extra back in. Then flip it over to create a smoothly dipped canvas and sprinkle on the jimmies while the chocolate is still wet. Give this video a thumbs up if you're a fan of these pretty pastel donuts. All that's missing is transforming them into donut pops and the best part is that there's no need to apply any chocolate to the stick. Simply insert the pointy end of the skewer through the donut without going through the other side. Last but not least, we can't have a cake pop bouquet without the traditional cake pops and when it comes to molding shapes, it's all about the dough. In many of my other tutorials, I show the base recipe and all the techniques for a smooth dough that rolls like a dream. I prepared the base recipe here with strawberry cake mix. The recipe is always the same, just switch out the flavor of Pillsbury cake mix of your choice and begin kneading in a stand mixer until it comes together into a dough. I've recently done a video reviewing all the steps, so feel free to refer to that if you aren't familiar with my method, especially when it comes to sweating the cake. When the mixer starts jumping up and down, that's the signal the kneading is complete, all ready for shaping and molding. The trick to creating any larger shapes like the hearts and cupcakes are to take about one and a half scoops of dough with a meatball scoop. This handy dandy gadget is spotted in all of my cake pop tutorials. Portion out one full scoop and about a half separately, then seamlessly roll them together by mashing into a patty shape. And once you have your patty, ease up on the pressure as you cup in your hands to make a smooth round ball. I like to slightly oval out the shape, helping the dough to fill up any gaps in the mold. Press the mold firmly shut to squeeze out all the excess dough for compact shaping and carefully ease it out a little at a time. By the way, all these fabulous molds are from My Little Cake Pop. Finish cleaning up the seam by lightly pressing all around with a toothpick or lollipop stick. The heart is pretty much done the same exact way, and when it comes to shapes, I know they seem intimidating at times for beginners, but it all comes down to having a smooth, crack-free dough and loading the mold with a large enough piece to effectively fill the mold. With a little bit of practice, the shapes can certainly be mastered. And guys, if you're enjoying so far, thank you for stopping by my channel. Be sure to join the party and subscribe for more fun treat tutorials and hit that bell to receive all notifications. Off camera, I dipped my lollipop sticks into the chocolate to insert into the cake and let them set for about 15 minutes before the dipping process. The colors used are these same pastel shades to match the donuts for the perfect conversation hearts. I don't know about you, but edible markers are nearly impossible for me to write on chocolate, 
Let me know in the comments if this struggle is real for you too. Until I came across these sad and ice brand food writers that actually work wonders. The only exception are cakesicles or Oreos. Anything molded that's shiny basically has a slippery, waxy surface. The pigments only stick to dip treats like our cake pops. I'm writing some classic conversation heart phrases with the red color. Alternatives to the markers are piping with chocolate or poppy paint. The other simple design you can never go wrong with sand and sugar hearts. The method that works best for me is to apply the sugar after it has completely set with edible adhesive. Although the sugar can be added while the chocolate is wet, it gives more time for a smoother application as long as the adhesive is spread into a thin even layer. A little product goes a long way. Then it's time to sprinkle on that sugar to cover all the areas. I follow this method for apples as well. It gives the chocolate a chance to set before dumping on any heavy sugar or sprinkles so it doesn't disrupt your freshly dipped canvas. To save any leftover sanding sugar, I sprinkle on a paper plate for easy cleanup and fold it up like a taco to funnel back into the bottle later on. It's hard to choose a favorite design, but the cupcake is too cute. Many treat makers out there dread dipping the half two-tone designs. However, there's no need to do that for this. After dipping the entire pop into pink chocolate or whatever color you want for the frosting, I painted the bottom cupcake liners with a gold edible paint. A high proof, good quality alcohol like Everclear gives the best intensity to highlight the pigments of the luster dust. When mixing your paint, avoid adding too much liquid or it will drip down the stick. No worries if the paint appears on the clumpy side. Pile on all the product like a face mask and go back in with a small fluffy brush to buff and blend with circular motions and all of the molded lines will start to show through again. The cherry on top is a pink candy heart from Sweet Tooth Fairy, Piper Dotto chocolate in place with a tweezer, holding down for a few seconds before letting go. As you can probably tell, this sprinkle grabber is my best friend when it comes to a task like this. For the neatest and cleanest look as possible, I dab on some edible adhesive. Chocolate also works, I'm just a fan of the clear adhesive since it's flat and undetectable, not bumpy like the chocolate. All of our fabulous treats are finally complete. Now to assemble these cones, I'm also going to share some key tips and important instructions. For reference, I fit seven treats in these Keebler waffle cones. To dress them up, brush the edge with melted chocolate of your choice. I'm using this pretty hot pink color. It helps to dab it on with the brush to fill in the empty spaces of the cone. Doing this in sections is best, that way the jimmies stick on. Then repeat until the edge is decorated. I follow the painting method instead of dipping so that it has an even thickness all around. It's essential to assemble the cones in a stand that's stable and doesn't wobble around. A metal stand option is great for photos or putting the cones on display. However, it doesn't work as well for assembly since it keeps the cone more rigid, making it more likely to break with pressure and it's also more pricey, so the metal kind is more for aesthetics and completely optional. Many acrylic stands out there don't have legs or staple support. I highly recommend this one that's designed just like a mini table with all around balance. Assembling is a little bit of a balancing act. The idea is not to start off stuffing the cone with marshmallows. Instead, gradually add as needed to keep things balanced. Their job is to act as a placeholder to help arrange them in a certain spot. I have my first pop that's going in the middle, adding two to three marshmallows on the end of the stick so it's able to stand up in the center. After that, drop in two to three more. 
And next going in are the two on the sides. To balance the weight, you can choose to twist them in at the same time. And the cupcake in the front should be the shortest, so I'm trimming the length of the stick. The front pop is the only one that doesn't need a marshmallow directly on the stick. Feel free to cut to alternate the lengths as you go to achieve the look you're going for. Whatever goes in the back is tallest and doesn't need to be cut. Once everything is in place, you can fill up the cone with all the marshmallows you want. Try your best to twist them down as far as you can without breaking the cone. I hope you guys had fun learning how to make these and you learned something new. Give this video a thumbs up if you did. They'd be a sweet surprise for family and friends or to offer for your small business. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.